morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Living Hope Lutheran Church. Welcome to our guests and our visitors. We're glad you could join us today. A special welcome to all of our fathers. Happy Father's Day. May you continue to be a blessing to us just as you are to all of your family. As we celebrate our fathers, let us not forget our Father in heaven. Let us show him our love today by worshiping him on this beautiful summer Sunday he has given us. Please stand and join in singing our first hymn, I Love to Tell the Story. <coughs> God, before whose presence the angels veil their faces, with reverence and love we acknowledge your glory and worship you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Eternal Trinity. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my God and my Redeemer. Please join in the verse.
Let us confess. O holy and most merciful Father, we confess that from birth our sinful nature has made us unfit to stand before you. What is more, we have broken your law repeatedly in our thoughts, words, and actions. So often we do the evil you forbid and fail to do the good you command. You know our hearts and our lives, Lord. We are guilty and deserve only to be condemned. But at your gracious word, we come to you and plead, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. The Lord, our gracious Father, has forgiven all of your sins through the life and death of his one and only Son, Jesus Christ. With his resurrection from death, he has given you the sure hope of everlasting life. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. So go now and leave the life of sin and produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Please join in the verses. satisfies your desires with good things, so that your mouth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, so is anger abounding in love. He will not always accurse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is selected verses from Colossians chapter 2. Therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are shadows of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of, the, forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, 
Do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules, which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading is from the legendary 8th chapter of Romans. <laughs> Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Now, uh, please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now time for a uh, children's message. I invite, if we have any children, I invite you forward uh, for a brief message. It's very important to my main message, so I'm going to have it anyway. <laughs> I brought this uh, this this candy lamp here, and uh, when I was a kid, I, I didn't really like th this game very much. Um, but I did like candy, so I thought I, wa I wanted to play it, and um, I didn't I didn't like to share candy. I guess was probably why I brought up candy. So, you know, sharing candy uh, when you're a kid, you know, it's all gone and you don't have any. But a game, a game you can keep on sharing. And so, I think with our children, um, you know, we, we can we can share with them games, and we, we can have special fun things with them. Um, and, and, you know, playing that board game by yourself isn't any fun. I used to also play chess as a kid, and that that's such a boring game to play by yourself. <laughs> uh, but things when we share them can actually be more fun and more exciting. Um, and I think that, that in sharing with God, it's the same way. Um, 
he he likes us to share these fun things with him, and so our our parent relationship um, <coughs> is just like our spiritual father relationship. We can we can share with him, and uh, and we can share our excitement and our fun and everything. Um, so I wanted to pray with the kids, uh, Lord. Thank you for our moms and dads. Thank you for how they show us what it is like to have a father in heaven. We pray that you can help us share our fun and joy and excitement for all of our favorite things with you, our father in heaven, just like we do with our moms and dads here on earth. All right, thank you for letting me do that. Ah. We'll continue uh, with our next hymn, Please Rise. Have my own way, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> today and bring us clarity as we seek to understand you. We also pray as little children. Please help us share all of our fun, joy, and excitement and all of our favorite things with you as much as we possibly can. Amen. 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 Now the parent-child relationship is important. Not just the obvious earthly uh, reasons, but spiritually I think it's very important. I don't think until you are a fairly seasoned adult do you really understand how much spiritual insight we glean from each parent-child relationship we experience or observe. We are like the worst kid on any given playground, throwing a tantrum, and he spoils us. Our Father in Heaven spoils us. Now, today's message uh, I've titled, it's, it's in the bulletin. Um, I, I don't really want to say it anymore because it sounds a little dramatic uh, to me looking at it on the page here. Living in love in Christ in a dying world. It's a message based on 1 Corinthians 10.31. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And now, I've been talking a little bit about fathers and uh, the parent relationship, and a little bit about sharing, sharing that with God as well. 
So combined with our scripture readings uh, and that title I just mentioned and in this inspiration verse, right now you may be asking yourself, how do these fit together? Well, <laughs> instead of me beating around the bush for 20 minutes, let me just come out and tell you. <laughs> it all comes down to one word. And it's in that verse. It's glory. I've decided sometimes I don't like this word glory. In today's world, it is too often ill-used or ill-gained. And my, sinful, my, and my sinful nature wants to reject attributing glory to God because it goes against everything it stands for, which is itself. We are selfish. But this verse speaks of glory as an all-encompassing thing, something to consume us that even our identity can be lost in. Now, to better understand this word, I did what nobody does uh, today anymore, which is I picked up a book, specifically a dictionary. <laughs> uh, the dictionary defined glory as one, high renown or honor won by notable achievement. Or two, magnificence or great beauty. I dug a little deeper in a concordance I have, and I found this. One of the two main Hebrew words, which is used for glory in the Old Testament, has the simple meaning of heaviness or weight. It was used in everyday speech to express the worth of a person in the material sense, and then to express the ideas of importance, greatness, honor, splendor, and power. Now that's a great explanation of the word, but nothing stood out to me in regard to this message until I turned to the etymology of the verb form of glory, which says, from mid-century, 14th century, it is to rejoice from old French, I assume, glory air, to glorify or boast about, and directly from the Latin word gloriari, to boast, vaunt, brag, or take pride in. Now, to me, to rejoice and to be proud of, those sound much more like the parent-child relationship, and most certainly our spiritual father-child relationship. That is a connection. That's my connection to the word glory. We rejoice. We came here today for this very purpose, to rejoice, to be prideful in our status as children of God. This is worship. This is glory to God. These words I'm using, these things we're talking about, joy, pride, honor, worship. We're talking all about love. We are in love. Someone who does something for the glory of someone else, this is an act of love, a celebration of love, a celebration of life. And when it comes to Christ, he literally is our life. From our reading is in Colossians, it said, For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Glory is shared. It's a celebration. It's about Christ. And I, again, I say we are in love. We are sharing in a lifelong, all-consuming love relationship. And we should not care who knows it. 1 Corinthians 10.31 is Mark 12.30. Love the Lord your God with all, of, with all your heart and with all of your soul and with all your mind and with all of your strength. We need to look at this like a decision. And I believe all of you have already made this decision, but maybe it's worth voicing. The most basic elemental decision in the mind of a Christian is or should be the choice to reject the first person narrative. Let me say that again. The most basic elemental decision in the mind of a Christian is or should be the choice to reject the first person narrative. Reject the I. Reject the me, me, me. Reject our selfish, sinful nature. Those in the realm of the flesh do not understand it. It goes against so much of what they see in the world. But everything I see confirms that there is no true, meaningful, lasting, internal experience 
that is not something constantly, persistently shared with God. Do all things for the glory of God. Love God with all of your heart. That is our single true choice in life. That, or honestly, we are dead men walking. The world is dying out there. It may be lush and green, and our lawns may be growing better than I've ever seen. But without a shared experience with God, there is nothing but sin and death. Now, the interesting thing is, and almost the hard part, is that as soon as we believe and have faith in Jesus as our Savior, he gives it all back to us. We no longer belong to the world, nor need to submit to its rules. We are his spoiled children, free through grace. So enjoy what you enjoy, as long as you can share it with God. Let your participation and celebration of everything in your life be acts of glorification of God. The excitement and joy of everything we love can be compounded by the knowledge God loves it too, and God loves lavishing us with these gifts. I want to keep talking about love. Uh, and it bears repeating. But instead, let me close with saying this. This is an unfinished message. I don't have everything figured out. We are no longer of this dying world, but we are still in it. We are no longer of the flesh, but we remain intrinsically attached. Love can conquer all, but sometimes feels like it doesn't. Sometimes doubt, fear, or frustration can obscure love that seeks his glory. Whatever you're struggling with, doubting, or suffering, if ever you are not enheartened by a message like this just gushing about God's love, or when doing all things, or even overcoming that one thing when it feels impossible, I can only say, never give up the persistent sharing of your life with God. Never give up God's glory as your motivation. His love is multifaceted. Put your burdens on him. Beseech his mercy. Pray without ceasing. Live in your love, no matter your physical state or circumstances. Focus your heart on what is above, where Jesus is, and know all things are for his glory. Amen. Now, um, please stand and join us in our next hymn, the first song of Isaiah. <laughs>
and now we gather our offering. <coughs> We thank you for our Heavenly Father. We thank you for everything that you're doing. Uh, we would like to pray today for, for my daughter Lily's her birthday. 
I'd like to pray for Ted's grandson Dominic's birthday and his daughter-in-law Sarah. We thank you for the years that you have given them, and we pray that you continue to bless them and continue to make them a blessing to their families. Oh, and we also pray for Matt's sweet. Happy birthday. We also would like to pray for Tim and Tracy Saunders' anniversary. Thank you for their marriage. Thank you for the blessing that it has been. Thank you for the years you've given them. And we pray that you continue to bless their marriage. We pray for Linda's cousin, James. We thank you for uh, the blessings that you've given to him. We thank you for how he's doing, but we pray that you continue to bless him. Heal him if it's your will. Well, be with the family. We praise you for Maria's job. We thank you for all of our jobs. We thank you for the blessing of work and all the things that it can enable us to do. I'd like to make a special prayer for the Clark's camping trip. We pray that you bless the teens on that trip. You keep them safe and you keep him patient. Bless that trip, Lord. Now we pray as you taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lord, us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. All right. Now before we uh, sing our, our closing song, um, please read the letter. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good Thank you. 
distance. If you haven't been up, get up there. Um, there's a few announcements. Uh, next week will be a big week. Pastor will be back. Um, we will have a voters meeting, a congregational meeting to decide the budget. This is always exciting and I beg all of you to come. Um, I think also the Aroma Lana and High Village will be here as well, if this is right. So big week next week. Is there any other announcements you want to have? You want to Happy Christmas again on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, April and I was going on a trip. You can see me for just a moment. Awesome. Awesome. Anyone else? Yes, the baby bottles. They appear to be over and place them on next to the other good bag. Um announcement. All right, then I guess we can sing our last song. Please, please stand. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Thank you for singing with me. I appreciate that. The head best is really threw me off. That's right. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, everyone. Thank you for leading us, Micah. Yes, thank you. I, I love doing this one. <laughs>